Salvini wants to challenge Maloney's leadership, and he can do so only by clawing back the protest vote. His strategy is to outflank Maloney on the extremes. Lega has proposed a flat tax to replace the existing progressive income tax and a pension reform that would give every Italian access to a full pension after 41 years of employment. Estimates suggest that these plans alone would cost an additional 57 billion euros annually, roughly 3.3% of gross domestic product. Such plans for heavy borrowing would likely spark another budget showdown with Brussels, similar to one that Salvini engineered in 2018. In turn, this might create another market crisis of confidence in Italy a highly indebted economy facing poor demographic prospects and a grim forecast for economic growth. It would be made worse by the fact that the European Central Bank has made it clear that it will not step in to prevent market turmoil in member states that do not abide by Brussels's fiscal rules. A crisis of confidence in Italy's ability to service its debt might call into question the long-term viability of the common currency, as it did in 2011-12. From a geopolitical standpoint, too, Salvini's stance is unreliable. A few weeks ago, he publicly called for a reconsideration of EU sanctions on Russia, though he later backtracked. Salvini points to rising prices and interest rates faced by Italians to defend his proposed tax cuts, pension reforms, public spending increases, and softening of the EU's response to Russia's war on Ukraine. He claims to be a man of the people. To avoid being outflanked by him, Maloney will have to convince Italians that high energy bills are an acceptable price to pay for the long-term security of Europe and that massive fiscal transfers are not a responsible way to deal with the economic hardships they are facing. Neither argument will be easy to make. 51% of Italian voters would like to end sanctions on Russia, according to a recent poll. That proportion is likely to grow as winter sets in. The difficulty for Maloney is to find a way to moderate or accommodate Salvini without reducing her credibility with EU partners and international investors. By compromising with him on these issues, Maloney would risk fracturing the West's united front on Ukraine, starting a fight with the EU over budgets, or both, a nightmare scenario. Even if Maloney holds firm, the very presence of a strong Salvini within her government would raise doubts about how long she would be able to sustain his pressure. Salvini will be able to pressure Maloney only if he maintains a firm control over Lega. His party is internally divided between radicals who want to preserve the party's status as a voice of protest and moderates who want to move toward the center and who think Salvini missed in opportunity when he contributed to the collapse of Draghi's government. There are signs that important parts of the business community are warming to Maloney's more moderate stance. At the annual Ambrosetti Forum at Cernobio, Italy's most important gathering for high-profile industrialists, financiers, and business people, she won plaudits by promising continuity with the broad goals outlined by Draghi. Salvini cannot afford to lose this key constituency. If Lega gets less than 10% of the vote, a poor showing for Salvini. He will need to shore up his position within his own party instead of sparring with Maloney. That will leave Maloney freer to moderate her policies and bolster her government's credibility within Europe, NATO, and the bond markets without interference from her unreliable ally. The other possible outcomes are less attractive. A poor result for Maloney could result in a fragile right-wing government that would likely collapse well before the end of Parliament's five-year mandate, and possibly in just months. Forcing Italy to rerun elections with the cost of living and energy crisis in full swing. Even worse would be a very weak showing by Maloney that might leave her unable to form a coalition at all. Given the deep divisions on the center-left and the inability of the Brothers of Italy to govern with the Democratic Party, this would leave Italy without a government at a moment of national crisis. 
A good showing by Maloney would at least offer stability and allow her to take responsibility for governing Italy. By softening her formerly populist stance considerably over the past months, Maloney has shown that she understands the stakes. Over the long term, Italians will have to judge her far right agenda and her plans to transform their democracy. But in the short term, for Italy, and for EU, the United States, and Ukraine, a strong Maloney would be better than a weak one. That's all, from the Foreign Affairs Report, September 21, 2022.